New plan. I want to use this chunker of a power bank to store power while the market rate is low and use it up while it's high to save a ton of money. If you are following my channel for a while, you probably watched me installing cheap ass grid tie inverters aka Balkonkraftwerk before it was cool. While everyone in the comments was worried my installation would be taken by a storm, nobody counted in how heavy those things are. However, the solar long paid off itself while we were scammed here in Germany last year. The power prices for the consumers were skyrocketing while the production cost was a magnitude cheaper. We have to brace ourselves for the next wave of scammery and go off grid where possible. So this is the plan. Step 1. Get hourly market rates for power. I got a contract from Tibber with a simple add-on that reads my digital meter and transmits the current consumption to the provider. What I pay is a small monthly fee and the current EPEX hourly market rate plus round about 14 cents for grid fees and taxes. But how does this hourly rate help? The clue is that Germany has an abundance of wind and solar and sometimes there is even an overproduction where the market price is negative. That happens on windy and sunny days. And this is where we should charge our cars and turn on the appliances. A nice side effect of this is the more people use it, the less CO2 will be emitted since coal and gas power plants are turned off during those periods. The EPEX prices are even set one day ahead depending on the weather forecast. So you can't even plan ahead without any complicated IoT setups. I'm not affiliated with Tibber, but they are available in several European countries already and you can get 50 bucks bonus if you are using my personal referral link from the description. So I got that now and that already saves me like 40% compared to my old scammy provider. But I want to go one step further, store the power while it's cheap and use it while it's expensive. Step 2. Get some storage. Orkitel contacted me to review their 5 kilowatt hour power bank. I couldn't say no and why should I? 5 kilowatt hours are huge and I can test my plan. The price tag for this is currently at 3000 euros, which is cheap for that size. It came with a courier and it's heavy. 80 kilos of lithium iron phosphate goodness. The advantage of using an off-grid power bank like this is that you don't need to pay an electrician for installation. But on the other side you need to plug in your appliances directly to it to get the power out. I tried connecting a grid tie inverter to the 24 volt output, but it's limited to 10 amps, so the most you can get out of it would be 240 watts at the time. 130 watts is ja nix. My DIY connector was sketchy and my 300 watts Envertech inverter was confused. And that's why I dismissed that option, at least for now. But before I get ahead of myself, I tested the features of the power bank to give you an honest opinion as I don't get paid for this review and Okitel just told me to do whatever I want. The power bank comes with some cables. I like that they put in an actual XT60 to solar cable which makes this plug and play with my solar panels. There is a 12 volt car plug with a cable, the 24 volt port, barrel jacks, plenty of USB with two 100 watt power delivery ports. They can charge my laptop and the drone while performing important tasks. The built-in AC inverter is rated for 2.2 kilowatts with a pure sine wave. And the sine wave is actually flawless even at 2 kilowatts load. On the input side there is a 1 kilowatt 120 volt MPPT solar inverter which is really awesome compared to what I had before. And there is of course the AC input which is able to fast charge at 1.8 kilowatts or slow charge at 800 watts if your AC source can't handle high loads. The AC plug is also used as a pass-through for the use as an uninterruptible power supply. To test the UPS mode I connected my PC including 4 screens and my mega cluster. But the stakes were not high enough, so I wrote a 200 page essay in Word that wasn't saved and I just unplugged it. The battery took over without any hiccups. Plugging it back in, the grid took over without any issues. This chunker could actually run my setup for over 10 hours. That would even cover the most of my live streams. The only complaint I got so far is that the fans are not speed controlled. Even though they might not be very loud, the sporadical times they turn on are distracting. I tested the temperature of the device during my tests. Even in direct sunlight, at maximum load, the exhausted air was cool enough to justify a constant but laminar operation of the fans. Speaking of full load, even though this chunker is thick, 
It's still mobile and could be used on a camp or construction site or even as a range extender. I did this test before, but with this capacity that could actually be interesting. Anything above 10 amps load, the overload protection turned on. But at 10 amps, which is 2.3 kilowatts and slightly over spec, it worked flawlessly for the whole capacity of the power bank and added 25 kilometers of range, which is impressive. I measured the output power and it accounted for 4.1 kilowatt hours starting from about 98%. So 4.2 kilowatt hours is realistic at maximum load. You are probably wondering, shouldn't it be 5 kilowatt hours? It actually is, but there are conversion losses and a 10% cutoff capacity to not damage the batteries. I actually measured how much power it takes in to fully recharge at fast charge and it was 5.5 kilowatt hours. That's an overall efficiency of 76%. It's good if you are considering that there is a loss when charging and another loss when discharging. So each conversion is in the ballpark of 90%. That observation is supported by the fact that the unit kept its cool during the 2 hours of discharge and 3 hours of recharge time. Since the efficiency may vary depending on the load, I took a complete day to perform a second test. I discharged it only at 800 watts and recharged it at the slow setting. This time it was able to provide 4.6 kilowatt hours, which is much closer to the nominal capacity. But the charging also took 5.9 kilowatt hours. Still the overall efficiency increased to a total of 78% unlocking more capacity. I assume under heavy load the voltage of the batteries is pulled lower and the power pack shuts down earlier. But my abuse wasn't finished yet. I wasn't gentle with the inverter, connecting a bunch of inductive loads and crappy appliances. The device took the abuse with grace and recovered from any overload. It's capable to power a complete gardening crew. So far so good. But here's my favorite feature, the MPPT charge controller. The included cable can be used to easily attach solar panels and you know already that I have two of those mounted professionally on my garage. These are rated for 300 watts at 36 volts open circuit voltage each. The two panels in series at 72 volts are already able to provide 360 watts at a little bit clouded afternoon. That is great, but I was able to score another of those 300 watt panels. Three in series should be still within the range of the charge controller. I mounted it on the garage, gave them a wash after the winter and put them all in series. That was 114 volts with 900 watt peak in total. The charge controller is rated up to 1 kW, so it could handle even more, but my setup comes close to its capabilities. 680 watts at 4 o'clock in the afternoon slightly clouded is awesome. A good solar setup can probably recharge this pack on a single sunny day and provide enough power for the complete night. That's really nice for an off-grid setup. 100%! 5, 8... It turned off. Cool! The advantages are... The capacity is great for the price. The overload safety features are flawless. The AC sign inverter is powerful and smooth. There are many output options. And the MPPT solar charge controller is pure gold. The disadvantages are, I wish the fan control was better and there is a lack of IoT options. For a nerd like me, direct battery access would be also nice. So overall I see many use cases like camping, constructions, off-grid and my plan. <laughs> So, can we utilize the power station to save power costs? I could try recharging it from the grid while the hourly rate is low. If that's not viable, I can still top it up from the solar. And when the grid prices are a ripoff, I can just pull the plug and go off grid. Even though the installation costs are minimal, we need to consider the purchase costs, the charge discharge losses, and the charging cycles. I made a sheet that considers those aspects and calculates when the use of the power bank is profitable. One aspect we didn't talk about is the recharging cycles. Discharging the batteries completely limits the lifespan of the lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is called depth of discharge. Okitel claims 6500 cycles at 70% discharge. This claim is even supported by science. For our calculations I assume 3000 cycles for the full discharge and 6000 for the 70%. In addition I added 80% discharge at 6000 cycles as the power bank cuts off at a safety reserve. Degradation of the capacity is not considered, so we should rather look at the 70% discharge results. The total output power over the whole lifespan can reach up to 19 megawatt hours. That's because of its pure initial capacity. 
At 3000 euros purchase costs from the link in the description, the price for one kilowatt hour is about 16 cents. What does that mean for me? For my plan to make profit charging from the grid, I need to cover the costs for power to recharge it and the usage of the pack. So the market price when we recharge has to be really low and when we go off grid substantially higher. This sheet shows the values for 70% discharge. This is the cost at charge. The lowest is 14 cents because of the grid costs. And this is the cost at discharge. The plan would only work out in the green region. So the difference has to be over 22 cents. That's very unlikely and only happened a few times during last year. A common occurrence this year is a variation of about 10 cents a day. So getting a battery for this purpose alone isn't viable yet. However, there is still the solar option. We would avoid the 14 cents grid cost and only need to compensate for the solar in addition. My setup did cost me 300 for the panels, 20 for the cables and I account a conservative 80 bucks for the mounting brackets. I would add a ground wire for a permanent solution though. So from here on the charging will be free with no grid costs. With this good charge controller it can do a cycle a day which is more reasonable now. Even with the system cost it starts to be profitable at 18 cents per kilowatt hour. The average currently at good weather is 24 cents which would be over 1000 euros in savings. Even at only 3000 cycles full fast discharge the cost would be covered at 27 cents per kilowatt hour. But if the prices get scammy again, just like last year, using the solar saves a ton of money. So does my plan work? Using this battery for this purpose alone probably not. However it can set off some of the purchase costs if you want a power bank anyways. A Balkon Balkon is a good alternative but it's legally limited to 800 watts in Europe. Using the batteries works around these limits, especially when the prices get crazy. The hourly rate and adjusting my behavior like charging the car while it's cheap goes a long way already. I will use the battery as an off-grid solution with solar as this works really great. If you have any other ideas, please tell me in the comments. I linked the sheet in the description if you want to use that yourself. There is also a link to the battery pack as well as my Tibber referral code where you can get 50 bucks bonus. Thanks to Okitel for sending me the battery and great thanks to all my supporters. That really helps. Consider subscribing if you like my quirky experiments and I see you next time. Bye. And this is the connector I was talking about before. <laughs> but the protection works. Don't ask how I found out.